we might as well admit it we want people to like us you may hear someone say i don't care whether people like me or not but whenever you hear anyone say that just put it down as a fact that he is not really telling the truth the psychologist william james said one of the deepest drives of human nature is the desire to be appreciated the longing to be liked to be held in esteem to be a sought after person is fundamental in us a poll was taken among some high school students on the question what do you most desire by overwhelming majority the student voted that they wanted to be popular the same urge is in older people as well indeed it is doubtful if anybody ever outlives the desire to be well thought of to be highly regarded or to have the affection of his associates to be master of the art of popularity be artless strive deliberately after popularity and the chances are you will never attain it but become one of those rare personalities about whom people say he certainly has something and you can be certain you are on the way to having people like you i must warn you however that despite your attainments in popularity you will never get everybody to like you there is a curious quirk in human nature whereby some people just naturally won't like you a quatrain inscribed on a wall at oxford says i do not love this doctor fell the reason why i cannot tell but this alone i know full well i do not love this doctor fell that verse is very subtle the author did not like doctor fell he didn't know why but he just knew he didn't like him it was most likely an unreasonable dislike for undoubtedly dr fell was a very nice person perhaps if the author had known him better he would have liked him but poor dr fell never did become popular with the author of those lines it may have been due simply to a lack of rapprochement that baffling mechanism by which we either do or do not click with certain people even the bible recognizes this unhappy fact about human nature for it says if it be possible as much as lies in you live peaceably with all men the bible is a very realistic book and it knows people their infinite possibilities as well as their imperfections the bible advises the disciplines that if they went into a village and after trying their best to get along with people still couldn't do so they were to shake off the very dust of the village from their feet and whosoever will not receive you when you go out of that city shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them this is all by way of saying that you will be wise if you do not let it too seriously affect you if you do not achieve perfect popularity with everyone however there are certain formulas and procedures which if followed faithfully can make you a person whom other people like you can enjoy satisfactory personal relationships even if you are a difficult person or by nature shy and retiring even unsocial you can make of yourself one who enjoys easy normal natural and pleasing relationships with others i cannot urge you too strongly to consider the importance of this subject and to give time and attention to its mastery for you will never be fully happy or successful until you do failure in this capacity will adversely affect you psychologically to be liked is of profounder importance than mere ego satisfaction as necessary as that is to your success in life normal and satisfactory personal relations are even more important the feeling of not being wanted or needed is one of the most devastating of all human reactions to the degree to which you are sought after or 
needed by other people will you become a happy released person the lone wolf the isolated personality the retiring individual these people suffer a misery which is difficult to describe in self defense they retire even further within themselves their in growing introverted nature is denied the normal development which the outgoing self giving personal experiences unless the personality is drawn out of itself and can be of value to someone it may sicken and die the feeling of not being wanted or needed produces frustration aging illness if you have a feeling of uselessness if nobody needs or wants you you really ought to do something about it it is not only a pathetic way to live but it is serious psychologically those who deal with the problems of human nature constantly encounter this problem and its unfortunate results for example at a rotary club luncheon in a certain city two physicians were at my table one an elderly man who had been retired for several years the other the most popular young doctor in town the young doctor looking frazzled dashed in late and slumped down with a weary sign if only the telephone would stop ringing he complained i can't get anywhere because people call me all the time i wish i could put a silencer on that telephone the old doctor spoke up quietly i know how you feel jim he said i used to feel that way myself but be thankful the telephone does ring be glad people want and need you then he added pathetically nobody ever calls me any more i would like to hear the telephone ring again nobody wants me and nobody needs me i am a has been all of us at the table who sometimes feel a bit worn by numerous activities did a lot of thinking as we listened to the old doctor a middle aged woman complained to me that she didn't feel well she was dissatisfied and unhappy my husband is dead the children are grown and there is no place for me any more people treat me kindly but they are indifferent everyone has his own interest and nobody needs me nobody wants me i wonder could that be a reason i do not feel well she asked indeed that could very likely be an important reason in a business office the founder of the firm just past 70 was walking restlessly and aimlessly around he talked with me while his son present head of the business whom i had come to see was on the telephone the older man said gloomily why don't you write a book on how to retire that is what i need to know i thought it was going to be wonderful to give up the burdens of the job he continued but now i find that nobody is interested in anything i say i used to think i was a popular fellow but now when i come down here and sit around the office everyone says hello then they forget me i might as well stay away altogether for all they care my son is running the business and he is doing a good job of it but he concluded pathetically i would like to think they needed me a little bit these people are suffering one of the most pathetic and unhappy experiences in this life their basic desire is to be sought after and this desire is not being satisfied they want people to appreciate them the personality longs for esteem but it isn't only in retirement that this situation develops a girl of 21 told me that she had been unwanted ever since birth someone had given her the notation she was an unwanted child this serious idea had sunk into her subconscious giving her a profound sense of inferiority and self depreciation it made her shy and backward causing her to retreat into herself she became lonely and unhappy and was in fact an underdeveloped personality 
द क्योर फॉर हर कंडीशन वॉज टू रिवैम्प हर लाइफ स्पिरिचुअली स्पेशली हर थिंकिंग विच प्रोसेस इन टाइम मेड हर अ वेल लाइक पर्सन बाय सेटिंग हर पर्सनैलिटी फ्री ऑफ हर सेल्फ काउंटलेस अदर पीपल नॉट पर्टिक्युलरली विक्टिम ऑफ डीप अनकॉन्शियस साइकोलॉजिकल कॉन्फ्लिक्ट हैव नेवर मास्टर्ड द नेक ऑफ बींग पॉप्युलर दे ट्राई हार्ड इनफ दे गेट दे इवन गो टू एक्सट्रीम्स ऑफन एक्टिंग इन अ मैनर दे डू नॉट रियली इंजॉय बट विच दे एम्प्लॉय only because of their intense desire to have people like them everywhere today we see people putting on an act because of their inordinate desire for popularity in the superficial sense in which the word is often used in modern society the fact is that popularity can be attained by a few simple natural normal and easily mastered techniques practice them diligently and you can become a well liked person first become a comfortable person that is one with whom people can associate without a sense of strain of some persons it is said you can never quite get next to him there is always a barrier that you can't get over a comfortable person is easy going and natural he has a pleasant kindly genuine way about him being with him is not unlike wearing an old hat or an old pair of shoes or an easy old coat a stiff reserved unresponsive individual never meshes into the group he is always just a bit out of it you never quite know how to take him or how he will react you just aren't easy like with him Some young people were talking about a 17 year old boy whom they liked very much of him they said he is good company he is a good sport he is easy to be with it is very important to cultivate the quality of being natural usually that sort of individual is large souled little people who are much concerned about how you treat them who are jealous of their place or position who meticulously stand on their prerogatives are stiff and easily offended a man who is an outstanding example of those truths is james a parley former postmaster general of the united states i met mr parley for the first time a number of years ago Months later I met him in a large crowd of people and he called me by name being human I never forgot that and it is one reason I have always liked Mr Parley An interesting incident illustrates the secret of this man who is an expert in how to get people to like him I was to speak in Philadelphia at a book and author luncheon along with Mr Parley and two other authors I did not actually witness the scene I am about to describe as I was late in arriving but my publisher did the speakers at this luncheon were walking along the hotel corridor together when they passed a colored maid standing by a cart loaded with sheets towels and other equipment with which she was servicing the rooms she was paying no attention to this group of people as they turned aside to avoid her cart mr pale walked up to her put out his hand and said hello there how are you i am jim pale what's your name glad to see you my publisher looked back at her as the group passed down the hall the girl's mouth was white with astonishment and her face broke into a beautiful smile It was an excellent example of how an unegotistical, comfortable, outgoing person is successful in personal relationships. A university psychology department conducted an analysis of the personality traits by which people are liked or disliked. 100 traits were scientifically analyzed and it was reported that one must have 46 favorable traits in order to be liked. it is rather discouraging to realize that you must have so large a number of characteristics 
to be popular. Christianity, however, teaches that one basic trait will go far towards getting people to like you. That trait is a sincere and forthright interest in and love for people. Perhaps if you cultivate this basic trait, other traits will naturally develop. If you are not the comfortable type of person, I suggest that you make study of your personality with a view towards eliminating conscious and unconscious elements of strain which may exist. Do not assume that the reason other people do not like you is because of something wrong with them. Assume instead that the trouble is within yourself and determine to find and eliminate it. This will require scrumpulous honesty and it may also involve the assistance of personality experts. The so-called scratchy elements in your personality may be qualities which you have taken on through the years. Perhaps they have been assumed defensively or they may be the result of attitudes developed in your younger days. Regardless of origin, they can be eliminated by a scientific study of yourself and by your recognition of the necessity for change followed by a process of personality rehabilitation. A man came to our clinic at the church seeking help in the problem of personal relationships. About 35 years of age, he was the type of person whom you would certainly look at twice, if not three times. He was splendidly proportioned and impressive. Superficially regarding him, it was surprising that people should not like him. But he proceeded the outline an unhappy and continuous set of circumstances and instances to illustrate his dismal failure in human relations. I do my best, he explained. I have tried to put into practice the rules I have been taught about getting along with people but get nowhere with the effort. People just don't like me and what is more I am aware of it. After talking with him, it was not difficult to understand the trouble. There was in his manner of speech a persistency critical attitude, thinly willed but nonetheless apparent. He had an unattractive manner of pursing his lips which indicated a kind of primeness or reproof for everybody as if he felt just a bit superior and disdainful towards other people. In fact, there was about him a noticeable attitude of superiority. He was very rigid with no flexibility of personality. Isn't there some way to change myself so that people will like me? He demanded. Isn't there some way I can stop unconsciously rubbing people the wrong way? The young man was decidedly self-centered and egotistical. The person he really liked was himself. Every statement, every attitude was unconsciously measured in terms of how it reacted on himself. We had to teach him to love other people and to forget himself, which was of course a complete reversal of his development. It was vital, however, to the solution of this problem. I found that this young man was irritable with people and he picked on them in his own mind, though no outward conflicts with other persons developed. Inwardly, he was trying to make everybody other over to suit himself. Unconsciously, people realized this, though perhaps they did not define the trouble. Barriers were erected in their minds towards him. Since he was being unpleasant to people in his thoughts, it followed that he was less than warm in his personal attitudes. He was polite enough and managed not to be boorish and unpleasant. But people unconsciously felt coolness in him, so gave him the brush off of which he complained. The reason they did so was because in his mind he had brushed them off. He liked himself too well and to build up his self-esteem, he disliked others. He was suffering from self-love, a chief cure 
for which is the practice of love for others. He was bewildered and baffled when was outlined his difficulty. But he was sincere and meant business. He practiced the suggested techniques for developing love of others in peace of self-love. It required some fundamental changes to accomplish this, but he succeeded in doing so. One method suggested was that at night, before retiring, he make a list of persons he had met during the day, as for example, the bus driver or the newsboy. He was to picture mentally each person whose name appeared on the list. And as he brought each face up before him, he was to think a kindly thought about that person. Then he was to pray for each one. He was to pray around his little world. Each of us has his own world. People with whom we do business or are associated in one way or another. For example, the first person outside the family whom this young man saw in the morning was the elevator man in his apartment house. He had not been in the habit of saying anything to him beyond a perfunctory and growled good morning. Now he took the time to have a little chat with the elevator man. He asked him about his family and about his interests. He found that the elevator operator had an interesting point of view and some experiences which were quite fascinating. He began to see new values in a person who to him previously had been a mechanical robot who ran the elevator up and down to his floor. He actually began to like the elevator operator and in turn the elevator man, who had formed a pretty accurate opinion of the young man, began to revise his views. They established a friendly relationship, so the process went from person to person. One day the young man said to me, I have found that the world is filled with interesting people and I never realized it before. When he made that observation, he proved that he was losing himself. And when he did that, as the Bible so wisely tells us, he found himself. In losing himself, he found himself and lots of new friends besides. People learned to like him. Learning to pray for people was important in his rehabilitation. For when you pray for anyone, you tend to modify your personal attitude towards him. You lift the relationship thereby to a higher level. The best in the other person begins to flow out towards you as your best flows towards him. In the meeting of the best, in each a higher unity of understanding is established. Essentially, getting people to like you is merely the other side of liking them. One of the most popular men who lived in the United States within the lifetime of most of us was the late Will Rogers. One of the most characteristic statements he ever made was, I never met a man I didn't like. That may have been a slight exaggeration, but I am sure Will Rogers did not regard it as much. That is the way he felt about people. And as a result, people opened up to him like flowers to the sun. Sometimes the weak objection is offered that it is difficult to like some people. Granted, some people are by nature more likable than others. Nevertheless, a serious attempt to know any individual will reveal qualities within him that are admirable, even lovable. A man had the problem of conquering feelings of irritation towards persons with whom he was associated. For some people, he had a very profound dislike. They irritated him intensely, but he conquered these feelings simply by making an exhaustive list of everything he could possibly admire about each person who annoyed him. Daily, he attempted to add to this list. He was surprised to discover that people whom he thought he did not like at all proved to have many pleasing qualities. In fact, he was at a loss to understand how he ever disliked them after becoming 
conscious of their attractive qualities. Of course, while I was making these discoveries about them, they in turn were finding new and likable qualities in him. If you have gone through life up to this point without having established satisfactory human relationships, do not assume that you cannot change. But it will be necessary to take very definite steps towards solving the problem. You can change and become a popular person, well liked and esteemed if you are willing to make the effort. May I remind you as I remind myself that one of the greatest tragedies of the average person is the tendency to spend our whole lives perfecting our faults. We develop a fault and we nurse it and cultivate it and never change it. Like a needle caught in the groove of a defective record on a gramophone, it plays the same old tune over and over again. You must lift the needle out of the groove, then you will have this harmony no longer but harmony. Don't spend more of your life perfecting faults in human relations. Spend the rest of your life perfecting your great capacities for friendliness, for personal relations are vitally important to successful living. Still, another important factor in getting people to like you is to practice building up the ego of other persons. The ego, being the essence of our personalities, is sacred to us. There is in every person a normal desire for a feeling of self-importance. If I deflate your ego and therefore your self-importance, though you may laugh it off, I have deeply wounded you. In fact, I have shown disrespect for you. And while you may excite charity towards me, even so unless you are finely developed spiritually, you are not going to like me very well. On the other hand, if I elevate your self-respect and contribute to your feeling of personal worth, I am showing high esteem for your ego. I have helped you to be your best self and therefore you appreciate what I have done. You are grateful to me. You like me for it. The deflation of another person's ego may be mildly done perhaps. But one can never evaluate how deep the depreciation goes from even a remark or an attitude that is not meant to be unkind. Here is the way in which ego is often deflated. The next time you are in a group and someone tells a joke and everybody laughs with appreciation and pleasure except yourself, when the laughter has died down, say patronizingly, well that is a pretty good joke alright. I saw it in a magazine last month. Of course, it will make you feel quite important to let others know of your superior knowledge but how does it make the man feel who told the joke? You have robbed him of the satisfaction of having told a good story. You have crowded him out of his brief moment in the limelight and usurped attention to yourself. In fact, you have taken the wind out of his sails and left him flat and deflated. He enjoyed his momentary little prominence, but you took it away from him. Nobody in that group is going to like you for what you did, and certainly not the man whose story you spoiled. Whether you like the joke or not, let the storyteller and others enjoy it. Remember, he may be a little bit embarrassed and shy. It would have done him good to have received a response. Don't deflect people. Build them up and they will love you for it. While writing this chapter, I enjoyed a visit with an old and dear friend, Dr. John W. Hockman, one time president of Ohio Wesleyan University. As I sat with him in Pasadena, I realized once again how much this great personality has always meant to me. Many years ago, on the night before my graduation from college, we had a banquet at our fraternity house at which he was present and made a talk. After dinner, he asked me to walk with him to the president's house. It was a beautiful moonlit night in June. 
all the way up the hill he talked to me about life and its opportunities and told me what a thrill awaited me as i entered the outside world as we stood in front of his house he put his hand on my shoulder and said norman i have always liked you i believe in you you have great possibilities i shall always be proud of you you have got it in you of course he overestimated me but that is infinitely better than to depreciate a person it being june and the night before graduation and excitement being in my heart my sentiments were pretty close to the surface and i said good night to him through a mist of tears which i tried to conceal it has been many years since then but i never forgot what he said nor how he said it on that june night long ago i have loved him all across the years i discovered that he made similar statements to many other boys and girls long since become men and women and they too love him because he respected their personalities and was constantly building them up through the years he would write to me and to others congratulating us on some little thing that we had done and a word of approval from him meant much little wonder this honored guide of youth has the affection and devotion of thousands of people whose lives he touched whomever you help to build up and become a better stronger finer person will give you his unlying devotion build up as many people as you can do it unselfishly do it because you like them and because you see possibilities in them do this and you will never lack for friends you will always be well thought of build people up and love them genuinely do them good and their esteem and affection will flow back towards you the basic principles of getting people to like you need no prolonged and labored emphasis for they are very simple and easily illustrate their own truth however i list 10 practical rules for getting the esteem of others the soundness of these principles have been demonstrated innumerable times practice them until you become expert at them and people will like you number 1 learn to remember names inefficiently at this point may indicate that your interest is not sufficiently outgoing a man's name is very important to him number 2 be a comfortable person so there is no strain in being with you be an old shoe old hat kind of individual be homey number 3 acquire the quality of relaxed easy goingness so that things do not ruffle you number 4 don't be egotistical guard against giving the impression that you know it all be natural and normally humble number 5 cultivate the quality of being interesting so that people will want to be with you and get something of stimulating value from their association with you number 6 study to get the scratchy elements out of your personality even those of which you may be unconscious number 7 sincerely attempt to heal on an honest christian basis every misunderstanding you have had or now have drain off your grievances Number 8 Practice liking people until you learn to do so genuinely Remember what Will Rogers said I never met a man I didn't like Try to be that way Number 9 Never miss an opportunity to say a word of congratulation upon anyone's achievement or express sympathy in sorrow or disappointment And finally number 10 get a deep spiritual experience so that you have something to give people that will help them to be stronger and meet life more effectively give strength to people 
and they will give affection to you.